Hey everyone, welcome everybody to our uh, second podcast uh, that we're doing called The Roundtable, just to give you guys a little bit of an introduction of what The Roundtable is and what we're trying to accomplish is we're taking biblical principles or things that people hear on a Sunday morning or things that people read uh, inside of a book or inside of scripture that maybe they don't know how to apply to life and try to figure out how do you apply it to uh, your real life and how do you put it into practice. Today, uh, excited about our episode, we're gonna be talking to uh, Gia Reed and Grand Kern. We're gonna be talking about Champs Academy and uh, how Champs Academy uh, fits into this whole idea of how do we take um, our faith and apply it into exercise, which all of us know <laughs> that exercise doesn't always fit with faith, you know, uh, or maybe we need to redeem ourselves after what we thought during the exercise time uh, of doing that. But how do we put it all together? A little history on Champs Academy. Champs Academy was started uh, probably four or five, six years ago. I don't actually remember when it was actually started. Wow. Uh, but it was started as a performance training facility for high schoolers uh, to be able to help them uh, train and be able to uh, help them get college scholarships. It's kind of evolved from that, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that um, here today. But it was founded with the idea, too, that it's more about the physical body, it's about mind, body, and soul, and how all those things fit together. So excited to be able to talk about it, go through kind of the history of where it's at to where it is today, and the great things that um, are going on there today, and the people that are involved with it. So Gia and Rayanne, great to have you guys on here today. So first of all, tell us a little bit about you first, Gia. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, a little bit about your life, what's happening in your life, then Rayanne, you can introduce yourself. So Gia, tell us a little bit about you. Um, I'm a hairdresser. I work in Urbana, Indiana. I don't know how many people know where that is, but um, I'm married to Mike Reed, who is a farmer. Um, we have two kids. Sydney is 25 and Kyle is 21. Kyle is operating his own um, big hog operation, so that's exciting. Um, and um, I don't, I don't know what yeah, else. Well, to Gia, how did you? How did I come well, to Champs? Well, yeah, I mean, how did you from Urbana, right? Because I mean, yeah. anybody that doesn't know that it's not like right next to Huntington, <laughs> yeah. so it wouldn't no. be just like you were driving by and found Champs Academy or Life Church. Yeah. Uh, in that, so how did you end up at Champs Academy? Um, well, um, my friend Linda Wall had told me about Life Church as a church. And I had come here a couple times, and it was it was just really um, I don't I would say probably a God thing. My sister has always been very active in CrossFit and exercising, and she had called me one day and she said, "Hey, you got to come to this Champs Academy that you know they it, they they're starting a new program, you know whatever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know that. I've I've gone to church at Life Church a couple times." And so she invited me to come down on a like a Thursday, and we did a workout together. I literally thought I was gonna was gonna die I'm like this this is for the birds but that's when I first met Rayanne and um just slowly started coming and you know now it's just a great experience I come five days a week and have been for about two years so um really enjoy it yeah at that time too Rayanne wasn't leading or running champs at that time yeah she was yeah she had just started already here because that time has kind of ran yeah I mean been longer than I think yes. you know that you've been in charge and so Rand tell us a little bit about you and uh, maybe a little bit how you ended up at champs and okay. uh, how you're a part of it now okay so um, I have been a part of champs for almost five total years so I started off teaching a couple of hit classes so I'm one of the crazy ones that comes at five o'clock in the morning yeah. and Not me. <laughs> <laughs> So I started off doing that, and then a couple of years ago, you asked me to um, take a leap of faith and, and come manage the facility, and, and here I am doing that today. Which again, just to, so our audience knows this, when she says a big leap of faith, like a huge leap of faith, <laughs> because she was a, I say this and she can explain what this really means, but she's like a big wig at Nove. Like everybody <laughs> knows her, she's really important there, has, you know, and essentially liked your job. It wasn't I did. like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm, you know, dis a disgruntled employee, right. and so I want to find something right. else. It was like, I love mm -hmm. my job. Lots of people know me. You're having a lot of influence. Great things are happening. 
And then I come up to you and say, hey, how would you like to take over Champs? Which we're not really doing that well. And we're still <laughs> trying to figure out how to make it all work. And we're yeah. still trying to figure out how to make it all fit into the community. And so, yeah. hey, would you be willing to leave a completely stable, awesome job that has great <laughs> benefits to come and be a part of Champs? That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> so a uh, little backstory. So I, a couple of years before I... Um, left Nove. So I'd been at Nove for 10 years. And yes, loved my job. Worked in human resources. Um, loved it. Well, a couple of years prior to this, I had started feeling like I wanted to do something more. Like maybe I was being called to do something different, but I didn't know what that looked like. And I um, then have, so I, again, I was working in Columbia City, so I'm working at that facility. And um, like the next year, I had the opportunity to move to the Markle facility, and I thought, well, maybe this is, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And um, but that little voice inside just was still there. Like there was something else I was supposed to be doing. And so when you approached me about doing that, yes, it was crazy. Like it literally made no sense for me to come do this, but. Um, but yet it did make sense because that was that was the voice I was hearing about doing something different. And I had actually um, called upon two of my best friends and I said, your job is to come up with every reason why I should not do this. And your job is to do, is to give me the reasons why I should. So um, we met and the, my friend who was supposed to talk me out of it said, I can think of, <laughs> no reason why you shouldn't do this. I feel like this is what, you, what you're being led to do. Um, and the, the, the topper for that was, then you and I met, and you, you really don't know me that well. Um, so for you to answer all of my questions and not know me was a big deal for me. So when we, when we met, you said, do you want to ask me your questions or do you want me just to kind of talk a little bit? And I said, you go ahead. And you answered questions that there is there's no way you would have known. So what do you do on your downtime? What does this look like? What does that look like? Which maybe would not be important to all people, but it was for me. I'm a very, I'm a very driven individual. Um, so it was important to me to feel like I was making a difference. And this just looks, at the time, looked a lot different than what I was doing. So Yeah, and I think both of you guys <laughs> would agree that the crazy thing about how God works in each one of our lives is, is that we get to these crossroads. And I think the crossroads for each one of us are different, you know, on the levels of faith that we're going to have to mm -hmm. take a step. But our worry, I think, or our fear always is, is this really going to work? Mm -hmm. You know, is this really, or the fear of, is it really the right decision? Because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are, are afraid to make decisions in faith because they're like, what if it's the wrong one? Like, do I get, you know, an X from God for making a wrong decision? <laughs> or if I make the wrong decision, is it going to hurt somebody else? But I think the cool thing is, is that both of your lives are a representation of when you hear that still small voice, it's like, hey, I should do something. You know God's already working, mm -hmm. right? Like there's already something else in front of what's happening. And I think for our audience, it's something to learn from. You know what I mean? Is is that if you hear the still small voice, it, it, it usually is God's working in front of you. So trust that if you take those steps, although it might not be perfect, you know, or all laid out, you know, it, it, that God is already in front of you, and, and great things are happening. And I think, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. And it was it was strange because if I think about what I did, so I still don't see it as a big deal because I truly feel like that was God leading me to this point. And uh, this is where he's led me and I listen for once. No, I know, but, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think both of you guys would know this, and maybe our audience can uh, relate with this. Like in scripture, it says, like, here's Peter and John, or here's these disciples, and people would look at him and say, those are people who have been with Jesus, mm -hmm. right? And it, the reason would be is because they're doing things that the rest of the world would say doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? Like, I doubt whether very many people would look at your decision and be like, wow, that was wise. <laughs> well, I kind of get that, that look a lot of times when I tell people this is where I was and, and now this is what I'm doing and it's, hmm, okay. I mean, yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. Like right? Most of the decisions that you guys would make in life, the outside world is always going to look at it and say, I don't know if that makes sense, but how we react in it and the things that we do is the reason that people can say, oh, I mean, I see Jesus. Mm -hmm 
in that moment because we are acting outside of what's normal right. and no normal person would usually take those steps of faith so it's a great opportunity or a great witness to people to be able to to see that so let's have a time let the audience get to know you guys a little bit what's going on in your life right now so I always <laughs> want to ask people oh, what are you reading what are you watching what do you love doing right now so you know, I don't know, do you, are you guys Netflix people? Are you, oh, yes. Uh, yes. So are you binge watching anything on Netflix right now? I'm watching the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> the Gilmore Can't believe Girls. you haven't watched the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> Is this something that it looks like I would watch? No, absolutely like? not. No, I wouldn't no. Like it. Um, no. <laughs> but I, I've been watching the Gilmore Girls and I can't just usually watch something so um I'll, I'll walk on the treadmill and i'll watch it and i have been known to just start laughing out loud i saw and her i don't even i, saw and I don't even know that i'm doing day. it yeah. but it just it makes me laugh and so, so i like you it can watch things on the treadmill yeah oh yeah i mean i'm just i'm walking on your phone listen i'm in a secret <laughs> steps challenge and so i have to win okay so i try to get as many steps in as she's possible. not competitive okay. not at all <laughs> but i am number what, one right now i am leading i'm trying to think about what happens to me. me on the treadmill and it's for sure not the ability to watch anything well when i start to laugh i almost fall off sometimes but <laughs> so do you give recommendations to people like hey I'm watching this on Netflix. Oh, we do it. this all the time. G yeah. and I do specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So we watch the Outlander. The oh, yeah. We're all watching the Outlander. We've all watched that. And then after that was over, what, did, what were we watching? Well, then we've you done were, Game of Thrones. We, we did that. Can we say that on here? <laughs> well, here's the, well, I, well you can say fault. Outlander. We, we can say Game That's of Thrones. True. Well, listen, so we watched Win the Wilderness. So I don't know if you've seen that on Netflix. Uh -uh. So this guy goes off into Alaska hikes like for 15 days homesteads builds his cabin out in the middle of the door now he's old married decides that he's going to give away his house so the house land everything so he invites all these couples out there and they get to win his house and land and the whole deal and oh, wow. we watched the whole thing loved it found out afterwards like so a little spoiler alert for anybody that's going to watch win the wilderness win the wilderness yeah the okay. guy's wife ends up dying after they leave from a heart problem and he ends up marrying some 25 year old girl who now wants to go back and take over the cabin that he just gave away so spoiler alert wow so as I you, this was, when I you love this, this like guy drama. during the when the wilderness thing when you love him just think about what he did afterwards anyway i thought it was so, going to be boring oh that sounds, no, that sounds really like good. some yeah so here's the thing though so we're like oh what do we do next so somebody said hey you should watch breaking bad oh yeah, yeah. i watched that's that one, one of my too. favorites too. no no yeah, you don't really like it listen <laughs> It has to be the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Like, I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, somebody recommended this to you, Sherry? Because I'm like, yeah. what is yeah. going on? Like, what is happening right now? Some of the stuff that happens in it, maybe it gets better, but here's the deal. Sherry started no, it's watching kind of the it same. last night, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm not well, watching what, another what episode. What season are you on? Because there's, a weird, there's a weird season. Okay, well, season one is what oh, we no. are. Like, episode seven or eight, and I've... I've walked away from a couple of them because I'm thinking this is just the oddest thing I've mm -hmm. ever seen. So now, last night, we turn it on, she watches one episode, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm going oh, to we would watch an episode and then we'd do. say, okay, well, we can watch one more episode. Yes. The reason just you one more, just one We don't have to get up really early the in the morning. because it's the weirdest thing. No, You'd it sucks like, you in. Gonna next. <laughs> <laughs> it anyway. is kind of weird, but. <laughs> so, Gia, what are you, what are you watching? I'm not really watching anything. The last one I watched was In the Dark. Have you seen that one? No, but I remember you. Telling she's me um, it. she's um, the the lady's blind. Okay. And but yeah, it's actually on CW. I think is what it usually runs on. But yeah, that was the last one I watched. But okay. it was good too. And it's farming yeah. season for you guys. Yes. Right? So yes. It's ramped up and a little, are they out yeah, the a little bit. Not yeah. Out in the field? They are. Yep. Okay. Yep. And my brother-in-law and sister-in-law just built a new house, Jane Shelley. Okay. So they're in the process of moving into the new house. So yeah, yesterday they spent all day with um, Tad was out. They built a pond. Did the, so, when they built the house, they built a pond. Yes, and okay. they've they did the the deck. Yeah. They would need to get that in the the pond before it right. the water fills up. But right. that's what they did yesterday. So, but yeah, now they're back to cutting beans. So yeah. it is a little crazy. Yeah. So give give me your little synopsis of what do you think of COVID nineteen? Where are you at with everything that's going on right now? Are you done with it? Are you worried about it? Listen, I was over it on day two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm totally over it too. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's. Um, I don't know. I wear a mask when I have to, yep. and that's about it. 
So you have to define have to, right? Yeah, like well, Walmart if the rules grocery store. Say you have to, then we'll do it. Because I'm a rule follower, so yes, yeah, so I don't like to, to not do follow, it. I'll do yeah. it. But yeah, here's the crazy thing. So around Indiana, like yeah, I don't, I won't wear one. Like period. Well, I won't go to Walmart because I think they're communist, by the way. So I'm not going to Walmart anyway. So that that's not going to happen. But, you know, anywhere they'd say, like, you have to wear a mask, I'm just not going in. You know, so we're That's totally my, my husband's right. attitude. Yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking, like, you go out west. We just got back from a trip out west. So I think, oh, you get out there, like, this is where all the backwoods, cowboy, hillbilly, like, mm -hmm. right where I'd fit in. Yeah. You know, so you get yeah. out there, and we get to northwest Montana into Whitefish. And we walk into the stores, they're like, you need to leave unless you have a mask on. I'm like, this is Montana. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't even have that many like cases that out there, do they? I have no idea. You're I'm on like, the fresh what air. What is going on? So we go to another store. No, you have to leave. I'm like, am I in the wrong place? I thought you'd come wow. to Montana and like you could wear a gun mm -hmm. walking into things. Yeah. It's like the old west or something. But <laughs> it for sure wasn't that way. But I'm kind of like you guys, kind of over, ready for it to be done. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah done with that piece of it so let's talk a little bit about champs and and uh, what we're doing out there what we're trying to accomplish what's happening so one of the things we talk about is um, we're not a, a gym trying to compete with other gyms like we're just not opening a gym to compete with other gyms so you you guys can talk a little bit about this but uh, the one thing about champs Academy that I think is unique I mean I don't know that um, if any other gyms in our area that are like this, but Champs Academy is a business for mission. Um, and so it was started with the idea that, you know, we want to be able to, to uh, add value to the community. And so we felt like one of the ways to add value is to be able to have a gym, you know, a place that people could come and work out and get healthy and do that kind of stuff. Uh, but at the same time that we also want to be able to not only help the community from the standpoint of getting healthy, but we want to help the community by giving away money. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's part of the, you know, business for mission idea. So part of it is financial, right? Other part of it, there's other parts of business for mission, but part of it is financial. So maybe talk a little bit about what are some of the things that we've done in the past um, at Champs Academy to be able to uh, uh, fulfill part of that mission to be able to give away money. So maybe you can describe a little bit about that. Okay, so we've had some events in the past, so not had anything this year, but uh, the prior year we did um, an event called Amazing Grace. And so what, what we do with Amazing Grace is the, the proceeds from that event we donate to Cancer Services in Huntington County. Um, we've, we've done that. We've had a company that has come in with a weightlifting competition. And if we, when, when we help with that, then we get the proceeds from the door sales. And we have donated that to multiple um, organizations, the Humane Shelter, Pathfinder Services, um, because side note, Creative Abilities, which is a, a piece of Pathfinder Services, does rent space from us, and so we're very involved uh, with those folks. So um, another way that we could give back to, to the Creative Abilities um, division. And so yeah, it's been really great to be able to do that. Um, one year we did, we, we do an annual MRF competition, mm -hmm. and FYI, our competitions are <laughs> fun and <laughs> they are fun. <laughs> yeah. um but we did a um we had people bring in different items and we sent them to i think five individuals um, in the armed service so that that was really cool to be able to do that um, but another outreach that we have um, we are associated with place of grace here in town which is um, has been a lot of fun and, and just can i share a little piece yeah, about yeah, that because yeah. not only um, so I'm a board member for, for Place of Grace, so when they wanted to start doing some exercising, our facility was um, a great choice for them. So again, they, they come in and uh, we get to um, meet these wonderful ladies, and it's really great because then uh, the ladies that are here can give them support. And um, I'm going to have Gia talk a little bit about how she became involved oh. with that too, <laughs> because it was, again, in our facility, um, we just kind of surround each other and I think we're all we, we all want to become involved and we all want to give and you don't always know how or where to do that and so we share our lives with each other and then we learn how we can become involved in some different things so do you mind yeah uh, so let's so yeah. let's just preface what you're saying because I think this is a really important part that I think people miss sometimes mm -hmm. when we talk about business permission so 
One of the things we talk a lot about, whether it's on church on Sunday morning or conversations with people, is we say, like, God calls us to live on purpose, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. what we should do, because we're all allotted a certain amount of time, right? We only get a certain amount of time on this earth, so we should probably be pretty purposeful on what matters most. And so we know this from Scripture, right? The only thing that lasts at the end is relationships, mm -hmm. right? Like, the interesting thing is we spend a significant amount of time amassing stuff that don't matter, that doesn't matter at the end. Scripture tells us, like, the only thing that's going to matter in the end is relationships, but we struggle with it. Just like you were saying, we're not sure, you know, if we have time for them. We're not sure how to make those mm -hmm. connections outside of our circle. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. right. the, the inner circle that we have is pretty good. Like, we can do relationships with the people that we're in an inner circle. But what about that other circle? What about those other people that need relationships that aren't connected to people? You right. know, and how mm -hmm. we do all those things. So the part of business for mission that I think it's missing with Champs Academy is this idea that it's not money necessarily or just money, that it's relationships, that the mm -hmm. opportunity to build relationships. And, and again, mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to be able to have Gia on here mm -hmm. because I think Gia is a representation of somebody who has experienced or taken the idea, like I want to live on purpose, you know, mm -hmm. and I want to try to figure out how to expand my borders. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, part of Gia's yes. story. Gia's story is like, I sit here and I know God's given me time. I know that he's given me talents. I know that he's given mm -hmm. me treasures, you know, and I think right. Gia, I'm going to be speaking for you and you can clarify <laughs> this a little bit, but you were like, and I don't know what to do with him for sure. Oh, absolutely. And over absolutely. time, you mm -hmm. have done different things, you know, even yeah. outside of Champ saying, okay, he's given me the ability I'm going to go in and I'm going to do this. But specifically, you have said, okay, he's also given me a, a forum or a place here to be able to build on that relationship capacity. So, yeah, talk yeah, a little bit about that. Definitely, yeah. Um, well, you had done a sermon one Sunday about talents, you know, that God gives us so many talents. And I was, you know, I think like everybody else, I'm like, what talent do I have? And I'm like, well, I mean, I do do hair you know and we were and you know ran and talked we had talked a lot about place of grace and because we I talk thought, a lot all the time yeah, yeah. we do <laughs> <laughs> and um I was like oh what if I could go and do the hair for the ladies at the house yeah. I was like you know how would you know how would that work or you know I could I mean I was actually thinking more of it but I would do it um like on a regular basis it, it hasn't been real regular but it's just because the need hasn't been there but um yeah so i just would go in and i some of the girls when they first get into a place of grace they're on probation they can't leave mm. so they're there for maybe four months right. you know you need your hair done <laughs> so i've gone and while they're there i've i've gone and i, I just take my stuff there and mm. i've done their hair and then you know that's kind of um given me a chance to be in relationship with some of them women and and yeah it's been great and then to see them at the gym it's even better i mean we just definitely it's more of a community i think at champs for all of us women you know you go there obviously for the physical aspects of it you know to get in shape and but it's also emotionally and spiritually such a gift because we we encourage each other i mean i really feel like we love and and support each other mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's great. Even when she's lifting more than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so let's talk about that. So that doesn't about, happen very often. Let's talk about the health aspect, right? Because mm -hmm. I think this is the other thing sometimes that gets missing in this whole um, quest to be healthier, you know, is, is that I think people too would overlook how emotional health fits in with physical health mm -hmm. and how um, the just coming in and getting better physically isn't always the answer for everybody. Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of other aspects over and so that's why we've talked a lot that at champs part of what we talk about or or the foundation of what we do is mind body and soul mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because we think that that whole relationship aspect of it all so something that you know you guys can both talk on so one of the things if you don't know about champs is that we have a lot of women and very few men yeah. you know that they come to come to champs academy and mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think this is probably why, because women are way more relational than men are. Sure. You know what I mean? And so the whole relationship aspect of it all is appealing. Like, mm -hmm. it's something that I don't want to just come in and get in better health. I want to come and I want to be in relationship with people. So kind of talk about the format of how things happen at Chance, or maybe some of the things 
that you guys have done mm -hmm. to continue to build on that relationship aspect. And then we can talk a little bit about how do we reach guys? Like how do we get to this place where guys experience some of the same things and how we can help them get to that place? Sure, so as far as, so we offer classes. Mm -hmm. So our classes are included in, in um, um, our membership. So, but a lot of the women come to the classes and the men come in individually and do their own thing, which is completely fine. But you're, you're right. Women, we, we thrive on the community piece for sure. So, and we, we challenge each other. So, and we're not, we're not coming in and lifting crazy things. We all like to see what our bodies can do. And that looks different for everyone. And, and we all have different goals. So, um, but we recognize that in each other and figure out ways that we can, we can help push Well, and each I think other. that's what's so great. You know, we have such a, a wide range of not right. only abilities and fitness levels, but ages. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm working out with, you know, Morgan and Addie and Kelly that are, you know, in their 20s and, you know, trying to keep up with them. And well, you're only in your 30s. Well, I was yeah. going to say, yeah, I mean, they're <laughs> right. only like 10 years older than you, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's a group of ladies that, that ran coaches that are in their you know in up their to 60s. their 60s to mm -hmm. 70s and that inspires me to be like okay I still want to be doing this mm -hmm. and you know so it's just yeah it's just yeah so let's great. talk about that a little bit Gia because that's the other thing that I think is really important like with that we don't forget that it's our responsibility to train a generation that can train a generation mm -hmm. you know so I'm not even just talking about the idea of physical training, like this idea of relationship diversity, you know, the mm -hmm. idea that mm -hmm. people who are 60 can work out with people that are 20 and that we can learn from each other. You yeah. know, and how important that part of it is because that's the thing, like help connect the dots with scripture. So scripture tells us all the time, like our responsibility is train up a generation of people, mm -hmm. but you can't train them if you're not in relationship with them, mm -hmm. right. right? Like if we're yes. not in relationship with people, how are we ever gonna be able to do that? And we tend to gravitate to what we're comfortable with and part of our gravitation to what we're comfortable with is people who are like us, our yeah. age, mm -hmm. people who are, but what Champs is offering through the classes is, is again, an understanding that it's not just ability, like you can be all different abilities and mm -hmm. still be able to fit. You can be at all yes. different ages and still be able to fit. And I think that's comforting because I don't mm -hmm. think people always recognize that uh, piece when it comes to Champs Academy, that you can come in at any ability wherever you're oh, at. Yeah. And, be able to find a place inside of a class or inside of a mm -hmm. relationship with people. So I just think that's an important part of what you guys are doing. Right, and it's not intimidating. No. What's, what's fun for me to see is, so um, my golden beauties, as they're called, um, they come in at a certain time, and Gia um, and Linda and Pam a lot of times will come in while the golden beauties are still here. And so they have gotten to know each other, and that's been really cool to see. But what's even more fun is... Uh, my golden beauties um, some of the ladies will say hey i saw saw gia doing this thing over there and i want to learn how to do that i want to know how to do that and so it's just really fun to yeah. see how i mean how it all fits together like right that. and some of these relationships have been even built outside of the gym like oh, i see you guys right. posting things on social media where you go out as a group of girls i think you talked yeah. about that mm -hmm. there's possibility going to be a retreat yes. with a group yep. of girls yep. that are yes. going to go out and do some things so i mean mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I think people miss the aspect of is that we're not just trying to be a gym. You right. know what I mean? So when, when we're looking at this idea and we're trying to decide success, right? Because I think that's mm -hmm. always important to understand because how you determine success will determine how you do business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so what you guys have determined, or, you know, what you've talked about, Ray, and is success isn't just determined by numbers of members. Mm -hmm. Success isn't just determined by number of payments come in. Success isn't just determined by how full the gym is. Success is determined by how well we accomplish mm -hmm. our goals, how right. well we build relationships, how mm -hmm. well we help with mind, body, and soul, and not just one of those elements. And that we know that it's being effective because people are building relationships even outside of you yes. know, the gym yes. and have friendships that, that are lasting outside of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just think that's a, a cool part of, of what you guys are doing and how that can fit together. Why do you think it is that um, guys are absent from, because I don't honestly think that it's just Champs Academy. I think guys at times are absent We're from. We're intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So we'd be a little bit afraid if we were working we can, out we can class be with a you that you, would, that, you, that, you would, <laughs> that you would beat us. Let me give you a little story about how this works. So not that Rayanne does this all the time, but, you know, because I don't want you to think that it could be intimidating. So Isaac and I worked out together before COVID. Yep. You know, and so then COVID happened and. Yeah, we didn't, and now we're trying to get back into it again. I Be saw them once. It's yeah. happened. No, one listen, time. and it's happening today. <laughs> but it's by happening. The way. By the way, so it's happening. So here's the deal. So one time we're talking about. So Ryan put some of these lifts up there. Sometimes we do our own things. Sometimes mm -hmm. we do yep. Ryan stuff, and sometimes I refuse to do some of the things that Ryan puts up there. Like burpees, I'm not doing like burpees. burpees. Like I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what's on the board. I'm not doing a burpee. There's got to be something else that I can do. <laughs> And he, he gets angry about it. No, I do, because yeah. I think it's dumb. Don't make this fat guy get down like that. I'm not getting back up. I guess that but, it's a, but once you get up, it's a celebration. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for some of them, I, here's the point. So there's a time I'm like, hey, we're going to get ready to do this exercise. You know, and Isaac's like, what kind of weight should we do? And, and she looks at me, and she's like, well, Gia does this. <laughs> oh, God. It's true. I just <laughs> Is that supposed to be encouraging? Because I'm not exactly sure. Like, I mean, is that supposed to make me feel good or bad? Like when it was I kettlebell was swings, realistic. that's what it was. I go over there and grab these kettlebells, and Rand looks at me like, well, Gia does the green stripe ones. I'm like, okay. Well, <laughs> Gia's better than me right now. <laughs> No, and, you, and you did say that. No, I don't. Again, <laughs> but it's all fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is. And that's it is, part it's just of it. fun. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, and then that's the thing that I want to make sure that, that people are aware of, whether it's Yuji or Rayanne. Um, the, the ability to be able to come and talk to you, to be, mm -hmm. able to, to, to be able to have conversations, to be able to get advice, to be able to, you know, feel encouraged, you know, in the midst of that. That's the other thing that I think is, you know, pretty exciting is, is that anybody can come in and it's not like you're off limits. It's not like if you if you didn't pay for your you know one-on-one uh, -on -one time as a trainer that you can't really ask me or that you can't do. I mean, anybody that's in there that works the desk, anybody that's there on a regular basis is very open to like you have questions. Oh, or, absolutely. Um, and it's yeah. done in a very loving way. And you know, I've said this before. Like even yesterday, Isaac and I are working out in there, and what's cool about it is, is that then Isaac's like, "Hey, Rayanne, you want to come out and see my new car? You know, my new car that I bought. That it's even bigger than." I'd already been eyeballing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like it's even bigger than. It's just the relationship aspect. Definitely. And I, I can't stress enough that you know if people are going to come and be a part of Champs. You know that they would understand that probably one of the greatest gifts that you'll ever give is probably not your health. You right. Probably one of the greatest gifts you'll ever give is people that actually care about you. Mm -hmm. Like people that notice you, people that don't just expect you. You know, and I've always appreciated this, uh, Ryan, about Champs Academy is, is that it's not just a, a, a membership number. Like you're gonna sign up and once we start taking your money, we don't care about you, just, you know, get here. It's just that we, you know, we know people, like you know them and you, mm -hmm. you recognize them and we see them as real people in real lives and we do care that it's more than just as the gym pool, the, oh, absolutely. the, the relationship part of it. So I think that's just a special part of Well, and that's, that's, I mean, that's Rayanne. I mean, that's her, that's the atmosphere that she's building at Champs. Right. And we all feed on it. And, you know, it, it's, yeah, it is fun. You support each other. You, you see, you know, a little milestone. Somebody's doing a regular push-up instead of a push-up on their knees. Or, you know, you're encouraging them. It's, you know, it, it's a great, mm -hmm. it's just, like I said, it's like a, little community that you know we just encourage each other and and it is more relationships mm -hmm. rather than just yeah I keep coming back I mean I like the physical aspect of it but you know I come back because I'm I want to see him you know yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine thought, going a day without you seeing you to, to talk to me <laughs> yeah well that too yeah <laughs> yeah so let's talk about what champs has to offer so if somebody wants to somebody's listening to the podcast mm -hmm. and they're saying you know what I hear this um I do want to work out on purpose you know I do want to experience some of the um aspects of what you're talking about at Champs Academy how do they get involved like what do they do do they show up do they call do they you know how do they get involved what does it look like you know what is a how much is a membership what does your membership include? And talk a little bit about that. Okay, so we are, um, our facility is open 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Saturday, Sundays 1 to 9. And memberships are single memberships are $35 a month, family memberships or household member memberships are $50 a month. Um, within that membership is 
and it encompasses every class we offer. It, it encompasses open gym time. If you want to come hang out from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., that's fine too. <laughs> um, there's no time limit on what you can spend. Um, that also includes, I mean, I, I will, I say I will in, invest my time into you as much as, as you want me to. So um, that's, I actually do some personal training for quite a few um, people right now. So that's, that's been a lot of fun to do that. So yeah, and really Ray and anybody that's there, cause Gia is at the desk at times, yes. you know, Gia mm -hmm. can also do the same thing. If people have questions, be able Absolutely. To, most of the time. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Come up, talk, <laughs> ask, you know, and, and be able to do that. So part yes. again, so it's $35 for a single person. Mm -hmm. And if they want to get signed up, do they show up? Do they call you? How does the process work? Yes. And yes. Okay. So, so any of the above. So, um, they can call, uh, the church and they can be transferred into champs um, email stop in there's almost always somebody here um, that would be able to help them yeah so just a plug so we all know that colleges are going to be done essentially mm -hmm. in after Thanksgiving and people are going to be home for a while a lot mm -hmm. of them so we're going to have a lot of college students coming back so great opportunity for them to come mm -hmm. um, so yep. we, we have uh, do we still have the ability for people to drop in do we have yes that? as long as it's during staffed hours right so right. yes. almost <laughs> almost all day right so there's a drop-in fee right. you know that, yes. that people pay so five dollar drop-in drop fee right mm -hmm. but you can also just come and it's the other cool thing i think about champs compared to what what i would know about mm -hmm. uh, other people is if you want to come in and work out for a month you just pay for a month you don't have right. to sign up and correct be on the books for six months or mm -hmm. a year i mean if you want to come in and you want to work out for a month then and, and give it a try and if you want to try the classes, which I think is cool, is all mm -hmm. included into your into your right. membership, right. and that you can mm -hmm. be a part of that. Um, so you can try a lot of different things yes. with that membership. Now, yes. with the fifty dollars household mm -hmm. membership, is that limited to a certain amount of kids? Like I had eight. Would all eight of them count? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know there's like limited. If you got up to if three you adults, were crazy and had eight children, then we can only accept four we would of yours. Probably refer you somewhere else. Yeah. Like, right. To, <laughs> <laughs> she had to a psychologist yes. who would say, <laughs> why would you ever have eight children? No, um, no, they would, they okay. can be encompassed into, yeah. into your membership. Yeah, so that's all part of the, the, the family membership. Right. Usually and three adults is, um, in, a, in a household would be um, encompassed into that $50. Right. And then um, $10 per adult in addition to that. So, for example, a household basically is whoever's living in your home. Yeah. Right. If you have six <laughs> adults living in your home, that would... Yeah, right. Not encompass that. So well, let's hope yeah. that you don't have I mean, six you, adults living yeah. in your home. Right? Which is crazy. Or six adults, eight kids. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. It might be a little weird if six adults are living in your home right now. Maybe. Like, I don't yeah. know. But yeah, that would be odd. So again, so people can go. Do they, um, the, the number to call to get old of champs is? 260-355-0055. And then that brings into the cafe. So then the cafe would just transfer the call out to us and right so the option when they call in there's not a champs academy option there might be <laughs> okay maybe, well we're gonna have to check two? on that one so whenever people call in we're gonna have to figure out if there's a champs I'm not academy sure. option. if there's not a champs academy option i do the cafe of hope cafe of hope right. which again is just another addition to well, here's a little extra bonus for you so if you come to champs academy what's attached to that is the cafe of hope and mm -hmm. we're going to actually be bringing on uh jenny next week is going to be on our podcast and we're going to be talking about the cafe of hope which is also another business permission um inside of life church but if you get done working out and you want you know to be able to have lunch or if you want to even be able to get mm -hmm. um like they have a spartacus right now they're working on which i think is really cool they're working on coming out with other lines mm -hmm. of uh, healthy energy drinks and protein drinks yep. and things that people can get after they're done working out so it's another great uh, opportunity uh, for people to be able uh, right. to do that so again just excited to have you guys on excited about what's going on at champs academy and really excited to see what god's going to do uh, in champs academy in the future because you know COVID has put somewhat of a 
uh, hurt on us being able to do events, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff. But when we look at 2021, being able to right. open it back up and have events and be able to invite community into, you know, and so we're going to be brainstorming about those. I'm sure you will be brainstorming about those and the things that are come. And, and again, we just thank you guys for everything mm -hmm. you're doing. Thank you for, you know, what you've allowed God to do in your lives, answering, you know, the call in whatever level that looks like. Uh, because we all know this, when we answer, then God can do what he wants to do. You know, when we sit on the sidelines, it's hard for him to work. But when we are in the game, you know, <laughs> then God can do uh, whatever he wants. And, and you guys are just a representation of how God works through uh, all of us ordinary people to, to be able to do extraordinary things. So thanks for being with us on the podcast. Thanks for having and us. Thanks, Thank everybody, you. for joining us. And again, we'll be doing episode three next week where we're going to be talking about or talking to uh, the Cafe of Hope. So thanks, everybody, for joining us.